Hey folks, welcome to Crypto Heartbeat. This is Matt. I'm excited. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. Interview with Brandon Davis from Rags to Riches. Brandon, how are you today? Uh, I'll tell you, man, I, I'm good. Um, it's Senior Citizen Night over at the over at the Walmart. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to going over there and chatting up some senior citizens and just telling them about the pulse and the hex and telling them about me. And it's just, it's just exciting, Matt. That's, that's all I got to say. That's awesome. Well, yeah. I've been uh, a fan of your, of your channel and just, um, I just love your approach and your style. And in a way it's kind of indicative of uh, hexagons in general, just such a wide range of folks. Tell me about like, why'd you start it? You know, you're offering, I think a view that is mixed, you know, this beautiful mixture of, what did I say before? Uh, humor and hubris. Yeah. So dude, that was tell me about, tell yeah. me about why and what you're up to. So why, why did I do this? <laughs> All right. So I'll give you the, I'll give you the surface answer and then we'll drill down a little bit. <clears throat> All right. Surface answer is uh, I watched a couple YouTube videos and I thought I turned into a pro trader. All right. So I wanted to make sure that all my friends benefited with me. So, you know, I'd shoot some text out and say, Hey man, look at this level, watch this support, do this, do that. And I'm like seven hours deep into my trading career. And, but you're seven hours deep, you know, more than 99% of the people. So kept doing that. And, my, and then one of my buddies was like, Hey, why don't you just make your own telegram channel? And I said, cool. So I, I think we named it crypto and real estate. Cause I do some real estate too. So uh, it started out with three people, myself and two others. And then somebody invited somebody and then somebody invited somebody. So fast forward, I guess it's been, I guess we're coming up on a year now. We've got about, you know, 600, 650 folks on our Telegram. Um, and it, at some point during that time, maybe in the past five or six months, I started making YouTube cha uh, videos. Uh, I had no idea what the hell I was doing, but I've, I found it kind of uh, freeing because I could get my opinions out there. I was telling you more of like a, a low risk way than doing it in real life. Uh, the irony is it's, it's very, very visible, but nobody sees it. So yeah. um, that, that's, that's what I did. Uh, that's what I've done. I built it up. I get to be funny, get to be myself, get to cut up and just to share, share how I really feel about the world uh, and talk about crypto at the same time. So it's a good little mix for me. Well, the, what I liken it to is kind of Joe Rogan. I mean, you've got this edge to you where, I mean, Joe doesn't care what anybody thinks. Right. And it's very similar. It's this combination of comedy and real serious issues. And it's funny to me, it really, not that you had thought about it as being transcending, you know, different uh, types of people or different audiences and those type of things. But I almost feel like the self-deprecating side of things Um it makes it a lot more welcoming to people. Do you think about those type of things? I, I don't. Yeah, of course, man. Yeah. Um, I, I think first and foremost, and, and and I'm looking at a lot of my comments and, and everything I say for the most part, I mean, these are, these are jokes that I tell everybody I know, but I look at the comments and people are just, they are begging and yearning for, for wisdom, no matter how it's delivered. And they're begging and yearning for, for realness. And I, I use the term realness very loosely because this is like a gen, you know, the, these younger folks say, oh, you're so real, this and that. No, everything is fake. Everything that you see online is fake. Every advertisement that's fed to you is fake. Every movie is fake. Every scene in the movie is fake. Every love story is fake. Every book is fake. We need something to hold us down. Yeah. And there, there are no anchors anymore. So when, when you say some, some really honest and wise stuff, and when I say some wise and honest stuff, no matter how it's delivered, people latch onto that to do your yeah. life. Yeah. I mean, that's just the truth. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, you're, you're, you're hitting on authenticity, right? Is that we're longing for stuff that we can identify that resonates as real, authentic. And, uh, you know, Va uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, yeah, Gary, you know, v. Gary v, he, he talks about this a lot, which I think is really cool is really saying, the best person you can possibly be is yourself because right. if you're authentic and genuine, it's going to attract a group of people that are similarly wired. One thing I've noticed about your channel and watching your content is you seem like an advocate for people. I noticed a number of times in, in what you said and all it's, it seems like you're, you have a desire to protect people from 
scams from the wrong things. It's almost like you're kind of a little bit of a watchdog or a big brother. Do you see yourself as that? I do. Uh, and and I, I can't take credit for it. It's something that's always been just built into me from birth. I, I really shepherd the people around me. Uh, I, I think that I've been given a slightly above average brain, not much above average, but I want to use that and help people that I see are being taken advantage of by other, other pretty intelligent folks. And there's a lot of people out there that are just preying on everybody. And I'm just sick and tired of it. Always have been. And, uh, and I don't care if it was, uh, if somebody's getting picked on at school. I'm the, I was a scraggly redheaded insecure kid, but I would, I would punch somebody. I was scared as shit to tell you yeah. the truth, but and that's how I've always been. I want to stick up for people. I want to help people. And, uh, and it's important to me. No, that's really cool. I mean, well, and I think in a community, um, having folks that are advocates and watching out for folks, I, I've noticed that a lot online is that hexagons come to come to the aid of other people. Um, I've seen that many, many times, especially even when there's just ridiculous comments and all that. Um, I've been stunned and I, I'm really curious on what your experience has been. I haven't been doing this for very long, but even when haters come into the um, into the comments and it's obviously just people coming in yelling in the room that shouldn't even be there yeah. and people being sensitive, you know, actual subscribers being sensitive and, and almost apologizing for them. Do you see that in your, in your side of things? I know you've got probably a little more hate coming your way, but. Yeah. So this is, this is important to know too. You know, most of the people that make these types of comments, when you tear away the layers Eventually, it's just it's it's a it's a tribalism type thing, yeah, and it's also a fear type thing. So if I'm if I'm going to bash one of their their cryptocurrencies, and and I don't really bash cryptocurrencies, but if I were to do that, got to understand that's not bashing the cryptocurrency to them; it's bashing their identity. Yeah, because with them, especially the younger generation, they combine those two. Um, anything that they believe is their identity much more so than I think in the past. Uh, and, and the, the other thing is people think that history began when they were born, yeah. but history did not begin when they were born. And, uh, and you can kind of see through that. So in terms of the people in the comments, man, uh, I, I have a feeling of, I, I pity, I have a feeling of pity for them. And, mm -hmm. it, and that's not coming from a place of arrogance. It's like, I know what they've been through because I've been through it too. I know the, the things that have been pulled over their eyes to, to make them become minions and, and pawns in somebody else's game. And I see that too. So I, I try to try to beat them up a little bit, but I also try to give them an option and, and try to suck them in and, and kind of look at the content or look at the content of, of you or somebody that, that's just telling the same, same, same good things, real things out there. Yeah. yeah that's really cool. Well, it's yeah. a, it's an interesting microcosm and, you know, obviously, uh, a, a training ground in some ways. I've noticed that um, a lot of folks that make content and, and do this type of things are, are generally pretty entrepreneurial. You seem like an entrepreneurial guy. You talked about earlier that, you know, kind of bootstrapping things and, mm -hmm. and coming up. Do you, do you feel like, you know, one of the comments I've, I've made and noticed about kind of the hexagon community is somewhat of an underdog um, attitude. I think they're, they advocate for Richard Hart because I think he's often misunderstood and they, they themselves, I feel like a lot of folks in the Hex community have to be pretty optimistic, but also entrepreneurial in the sense that they're, um, you know, they're not, I, I jokingly say kind of misfits, but it's more of a underdog. Do you see that as well? Do you see yourself as that? Do I see myself? Uh, do I see myself as an underdog? I, I guess. I guess I could say um, one of the reasons I'm part of this community is yeah, you you, you have something to prove, right? Yeah. Uh, and and the thing about me, like yeah, I, I would take criticism pretty tough, but again, one of those things, those gifts that I was born with that I can't take credit for is I just I kept coming back, and and I will get I, and I don't learn things quick. It takes me a long time, but I, I think my level of mastery accelerates faster at a certain point than other people. So, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of, 
it's kind of difficult to to say whether or not that this is just isolated to hexagons because you got to think about the population in general. Most people don't have the desire. Some people don't have the acumen to be able to even tap into this atmosphere, this ecosphere, yeah. ecosystem here. Um, and then when you're dealing with the people who can, most of those people are entrepreneurial just, just in general, because they've been searching and they don't, they know there's something out there. Uh, they couldn't find it for a long time, but then they settled, they settled where they settled. And a lot of those are hexagons. I think we have a lot of people that search for answers and don't give up Yeah, because they know inside, they feel something that's off. Um, and they know there might be a better way. Uh, so yeah, hexagons are like, it's like Israel, man. They've been at war for about 50 years. They've been getting beat up. They're the most battle hardened people in the crypto space without a doubt. And there's, there's no better uh, illustration of that than just going to the coin market Right. I mean, right. no other community, <laughs> if yeah. you want to say tout can tout, can tout that. So, yeah. So yeah, um, they, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Yeah. That's something that, um, I mean, you kind of, you're illustrating this crucible effect, right? That people in a way are being refined in the fire, right? It hasn't been easy the whole time. And I think fighting for something. And I like that idea because if you don't have an enemy, it's kind of hard to fight. And so this idea that you're fighting against something that you're kind of at war with that we can overcome, I think it galvanizes the community together. Without a doubt. And especially every, every second that passes by, uh, things go more and more and more in our favor. And you've noticed, generally speaking, that the hate and the vitriol have, have died down oh, yeah. quite a bit in the past, yeah. probably six months to a year. Uh, and But I guarantee you, they're waiting in the shadows. If anything crazy happens, they're waiting. The oh, pounds. and we just saw that too. I mean, that's actually, let's do a transition here to, yeah. to hacks because here we are talking right after all this FUD related to what, 54% drop. Mm-hmm. I checked this morning and it was up 40% in hours. Mm-hmm. I assume we hit the bottom. Um, but uh, people came out of the woodwork on my channel. How about you? It's just yeah, all... same thing. Just talking <laughs> trash, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So people are so worried about things. Well, let me ask you this. Everyone says they love to hear how people heard about Hex for the first time. I jokingly, well, not jokingly, I tell them. It was 2 a.m. I couldn't sleep. And there was a TV, a TV ad on late night TV. And it was it was one of these videos that was made for the web that somebody paid to put on cheap late night TV. And I thought it was a network marketing MLM thing. Mm-hmm. And I literally just sitting there and I and it was like, do you want to be a billionaire? <laughs> and it was funny. That's how I first heard about Hex. How about you? How did you first hear? Yeah, I, I think uh, I think it was Twitter. Um, or it might have been, it might have been YouTube, but it was suggested to me. And I see this, uh, I see this, I don't know, this, this, he looked like a drug dealer from the early to mid 80s with a top hat on, uh, telling me <laughs> how to live my life. And, and in my mind, I'm like, who the hell is this dude? Like, it's the type of guy that I probably would get in a bar fight with because of how much arrogance and this and that, that, that it was, I was perceived, was perceived to, as coming across at the time, but at the time I didn't know that's, that's the marketing game and that's what he was playing. So uh, I started following him. Uh, I didn't get on board for a long time mm. and uh, I kept watching him and kept listening and just listening to some of his back and forth with, with folks. And, and I'm a, I'm a salesperson myself. So I said, man, this guy is just full of it, completely full of it. Um, but but uh, I pushed aside all that and I said, OK, I'm going to start verifying what's coming out of his mouth. And that's when I was like, OK, there's something here. I hate to admit it, but there is. Uh, and, and everything that I verified, everything that I looked, it checked out every mm-hmm. single thing. Yeah. Uh, background check the dude <laughs> to yeah. verify it, too. I'm sure many people have. Yeah. So. Uh, so, yeah. So that's that's how I heard about him. Wow. That's interesting. Well, and it goes to show you too, how important it is to have a, or how helpful it is from a marketing perspective to have a person to tie the product to, um, like a Steve jobs with Apple. Um, you know, I would say it's kind of debatable. I sometimes feel like Richard doesn't do himself a whole lot of favors and he's, he's definitely picked a lane, right. That he's going to be in. I do like the fact that he stopped, you know, swearing to, 
which I thought was a actually pretty endearing that he didn't want to keep uh, somebody's mom from having to yeah. hear this language. Yeah, but yeah. do you think that there's, um, you know, I, I do think that there are people who are kind of judging the book by its cover and not digging any deeper. You have any thoughts or well, advice for people? Here's what I tell people. Like, let's just use, we're going to use politics. We won't use specific president names, but there was once a president <laughs> that looked really good on camera and he was highly presidential followed by a president who was an ass in just about every single way. Now, regardless of their reasons, it's all about perception. That's what people see. But with one president, I loved him as a person. I hated his policies. The other president, I hated him as a person and I loved him. I loved his policies. So that's kind of where I see, that's where I'm at right now. I don't like the way that he operates. I wouldn't, well, and it would not be the way that I chose to run my business or I chose to go down a path, but that's the way he chose. And that's just what it is. And I, and I think I get the angles. I think the bad PR is, is a, a, it reaches massively in, into the depths of the crypto sphere. Everybody's heard about the guy. That's for sure. Yep. Um, so it, it works for him. It's not something that I would do. Uh, because of, of many reasons, things that I've gone through in my life, but it works for him. And, and he's starting to mellow out. He's st- I think he's yeah. starting to turn into the person who, who he really is behind the character. Uh, you know what? And that's, that's really encouraging. I mean, I think as we age, we tend to, um, <laughs> we tend to shed some of those things, but I, I would agree with you. I think that I had the same impression. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I kind of feel like, you have to look past things. And it's unfortunate that it's a barrier because what I see from my perspective is someone that um, was hurt. Right. And I I know we all have been, and everybody's got wounds in their lives and this constant desire to say, well, okay, now I've got the ability to have $250,000 watches and fancy cars and all this kind of stuff, but it still isn't enough. And that, well, maybe if I get respect and that, you know, maybe if I'm the king of crypto, maybe then, and I think you and I both know that that's not the source of um, significance or the source of peace in your life. But, you know, seeing that I have actually a lot of compassion for him because I think that it makes me trust him more. And I've mentioned this to, to folks in my life before is that I don't really trust anybody that hasn't gone through you know, tragedy in their lives. Yeah. Um, because it, it, it helps form and shape them. But to me, he's playing cards with his cards face up and I see him and I have compassion. And also I have a lot of confidence in it because I know that he would never sacrifice his journey trying to gain, uh, this level of acclaim, but more respect from the peers that are, he considers peers out there, which you probably will never get. Right. Um, he would never sacrifice that um, for the community. Like we're a vehicle for him to show them they were wrong. Do you mm-hmm. see it that way? Yeah. Um, I think that uh, the first thing I want to point out is he, he is playing a game that unfortunately has to be played these days to get the, 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 uh, the level of success that you want and the amount of time that you want. You can play a long game. You can take 15 or 20 years to do something. But, the, but this, this is growing so fast. You, you don't have that luxury. So I think he, he – and he's made comments about it. He's, he's watched Trump. He's made comments about what happened with, with the bad publicity there and, and how, how that operates. So I think he's playing that game first and foremost. And secondly – I've never met the man. Okay. So I haven't had a conversation with them. I don't claim to know what he's all about. I just know that the, the, the way he operates, you're not just born with that. You got to go through something to understand how to deal people, deal with people the way he deals with them. Yep. And and I'm speaking from experience there. And I, and I see that side of him. I, like you said, you know, it's the, he's got to prove something. And, And I think you and I both know, where those types of things come from. Yeah. Uh, and I, and I just hope, I hope for his sake that, uh, I hope he, he, he finds some, some peace, man. And, yeah. and, uh, you know, that could be controversial, but I don't really care because it's, 
on video every single day, every time yeah. I watch it. Yeah, no, you're you're right on. You know, it's interesting about that. You talk about having to play the game a certain way these days. You know, I think about, um, you know, attracting the right people and the most amount of value, you know, just thinking about, well, if you were doing the same thing or doing it again, would you do it the same way? If I ever get a chance to interview uh, Richard, which is really my goal in life mm-hmm. right now. Sure, sure. Um, so you're the warm up act, just so you yeah, know. Oh, Lord, George. don't don't do that shit, man. I'm sorry about cussing. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, somebody's mom. No, but you know, it's funny is we talk about, well, that's what it takes these days to grow and everything. I look at the number of holders of Hex and it's not that impressive of a number to me. I know it is because they've given money, but let's say it's somewhere between 270 and 300,000 holders. And I think about the population, right? And then I think about this idea, we talk about pre-viral a lot. And I, I think about this, I go, all right, what does it take for, you know, a lot of the people that watch my channel, I would say they're probably, you know, when I look at the statistics, it's like 35 to 65, right? Mm-hmm. So I've got kind of this older skewed group of people. And I think about people who's got kids and families and all that. Well, it's not swearing. It really moves them into this uh, more approaching this category of people. But if you think about what mainstream is and viral is, it's when mom and grandma feel comfortable, you know, mm-hmm. making this investment. And I think there's a lot of things that are disconnected and disjointed. And, it, you know, we talked earlier about um, authenticity and there's a it's literally like a bone out of joint. Right. And I know that it's done for a reason to say, well, if I just have these watches and I just have this stuff and I don't know if you ever saw them unboxing stuff and having pajamas on yeah. that look like a clown yeah. and you go, it doesn't fit because the things that attract me the most to him is when he's dealing with difficult people or when he's talking about the Sons Foundation or when he's dealing with people in a meetup. And I, he impressed me so much the way he welcomed people and shook their hands. I was like, holy crap, this guy is impressive and has some skills. And, you know, I see the kind of the abrasive side and all this. And I'm like, the, the, I understand Louis Vuitton's got a lot of followers and all of that stuff, but it feels like a disjointed joint. It's a, it's a, it's broken to me and it lacks the authenticity. And I almost feel like if he wants this to go mainstream or wants it to go viral, I think focusing on the heart of the matter, right? The very name that he takes on the reason that he wants to, you know, he did self-help stuff. I don't know if you've looked into that stuff, but there's some really good content there. Mm -hmm. He knows the truth about, you know, he knows what, uh, what's going on. He understands human behavior. And it's almost like, I think he has this opportunity to, and maybe he will eventually go there. Maybe that's part of his strategy. Cause I mean, he may be even more of a genius than I give him credit for, which is a lot. Yeah. Thoughts on that. Um, Yeah. He, (sighs) he's 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 playing it's a most of what comes out of his mouth is due to marketing yeah and and he's onboarding people the way the way he's typically onboarded everybody from the beginning and that's he's a shock jock man yeah that's what he is in every single way um and he knows that prada is going to do well with the youtube algorithm he knew he knows that gucci is going to do well with younger folks and he, he has to understand that in order for this to, to do real well, you, you got to keep onboarding people and you have to connect with that lower demographic. You know, in fact, one of my videos that I'm planning on is starting to reach out to those younger folks, hmm. you know, and, and get them get them involved. Uh, now, the question is, what am I willing to sacrifice as a, a content creator and a human being <laughs> to, try, to try to connect with those folks? Yeah. I don't know. I've got some ideas, but I, I think that I think what he's doing in terms of the amount of reach, if you've noticed his social media accounts, they are growing. Yeah, uh, they're growing pretty quickly. He'll be at 100,000 Twitter followers pretty soon. And eventually the scale is going to tip. And, uh, and and those those computers and those AI that algorithms will will give him a bigger audience. And he knows that. So I I do agree with the fact that it is disjointed. It, it takes a person with the ability to really critically think, to, to push past what's on the surface and then look and see. But then again, let's, let's assume that maybe he only wants those types of folks initially. 
yeah. because those folks, the, the free thinkers, the people who have that ability, they're going to form the bedrock and foundation of what this project is, what Pulse is, what you know, the pancake swap fork is, whatever else that he decides to do in the future. So yeah. maybe he knows that too. There's a lot of different angles. Disjointed, yeah. yes. Do I understand also? I do. Yes, I get it. Well, that's that, you make a really good point. I, I I feel like that's helped me understand some of these things because, you know, I don't pander, right? And you think about this idea of pandering to an audience that you're not a part of. And if it works, it works. It just shows how shallow it is. And I do think that the to extend things into a group of people who have money. And I, and I really, it's a hard balance for me because on one hand I go, okay, getting young people is important for the long-term longevity, but they're not the ones that have money. And I think about the people that actually have money and I look at, you know, the extreme is almost like on one end is Richard Hart and then the other end is Cardano, right? It's like a bunch of, you know, math majors. Yeah. And, you know, you think about it, it's like, okay, not that you need to be, you know, buttoned down and wall street and those type of things, but I love it partly because I do see it as an underdog type of thing. I see mm -hmm. it as, um, and that's what I love about crypto. And I love about the independent nature of, uh, you know, of hacks being something that's, you know, finished. And it's almost like I, I, I say a, a hand grenade, right? He's pulled the pin and thrown it to us and it, it blows up in different ways for people in amazing ways. So I want to, I want to shift to that. I want to talk to you about, yeah. um, you know, there's almost a evolution that happens for each person when they come into hacks. And then I want to jump to pulse after that, but you know, it's interesting. And this is really, I mean, I'm still going through the evolution of understanding the gravity of what this hex thing means. Mm -hmm. And for me, a, a revelation in the last couple of days has been this idea of built into hex's contract is this idea of freedom. Mm -hmm. And of course, a lot of that comes from the very nature of decentralization. Um, I'm really curious for, for you, what, what was that process for you? I mean, did you have to understand it, you know, completely before you jumped into it? Or is it one of the things where you're like, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll put my toe in. Well, I had to, you know, in order for, in order for me to feel comfortable talking to other people about it, I had to make sure that I had a certain level of, of knowledge about how it works. So what I do, I teach it, and that helps me learn it. <clears throat> um, the the thing that kind of the thing that I really like, just in general, I hadn't gotten into any projects that, like I was into Ethereum. Smart smart contracts really really blew my mind, just in general. When I started hearing about all their their uses, supply chain uses, medical uses, this that whatever. Uh, but then the, the, I said, well, yeah, how come nobody has really, how come nobody has made a CD on the blockchain? Now there have been other projects in the past, but they haven't done what Hex has done in that, you know, obviously there's a lot of third party in, in, in financial, traditional finance. So we're able to take all of that money. They got pulled away from the actual customers who were using these systems and we can now, and I use this word loosely, redistribute, can redistribute that money to the people who are using these systems in a trustless mathematical way. It, it makes so much sense and, and simultaneously scares the hell out of, uh, out of traditional finance. It has to. They're right now, they're racking their brains trying to figure out a way to compete with this stuff. And, and the, the truth is, uh, there's no competing. It's like a bad LSD trip. You just got to roll with it, man. Got to. So, so to, to answer your question, I said, yeah. I said, how come we haven't just copied the 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 platforms and the systems and and the engineering of these systems that have been around for a hundred years? And why aren't we just putting them on blockchain? And why aren't we just taking this interest, et cetera, and giving it back to the people? Because we have the ability to do that now. And I think after 10 years and after seven or eight years of smart contracts, people are starting to wake up. Oh, here's some powerful stuff. Now yeah. it was always looking at us, but we need a couple people to dive into it to really bring it to the forefront and say, Whoa, yeah. I mean, abundance, insane yeah. abundance. Yeah. You know, well, there's no reason for anybody to, to be under the weather in this world. None. Yeah. 
So let's dive into that. I'm so glad you brought that up because that's yeah. a, a topic that I'm really interested in. Okay. So this idea of scarcity versus abundance, and let's drill into this. So obviously every conflict that's ever been fought has been over scarcity, right? right? And, you know, we see this obviously in energy, we see this in just about all aspects of life. And of course you look into the political sphere and most people are trying to solve those problems, you know, from the big hand of government. And, you know, you've seen this over the years. I mean, it seems like every generation's got their um, social engineering project. That's going to fix everything that never ends up happening. And mm -hmm. The observation I made yesterday, which is basically a breakthrough for me, is this idea of separating political power from financial power. Yeah. And that what's fascinating about this is, you know, you see a lot of people across the world trying to do these things like universal basic income. And, you know, if we just pay people not to work or whatever it may be. And we know that there's something inherent in this nature of productivity and, and creating things. And it's, it's just wired into us. Well, I'm going to agree with you, and I want, really want to hear your your thoughts on this as well. Is when you look at the smart contract and decentralization, and when you do build things, for example, with yield, um, in the past, it's almost like I imagine at the top of some you know hundred story building, a bunch of you know rich fat cats who basically said, "Hey, we made the rules, so we skewed them in our favor," right? Mm -hmm. And I just not that I know the Rockefellers, but it just feels like that, right? Guys smoking cigars, they've eaten too much. You know, they're probably a little bit drunk and they're like, ha ha, we took advantage of the masses. And what this feels like and what it really seems like to me is a real opportunity and, and an amazing gift. It is to say, well, what if the system of money was something that anyone could tap into. And I like this idea you're talking about abundance is that you have to understand how to tap into it. But if you don't tap into it, that's your own fault. Boom. That's that's it, the key. Yeah. It's your own fault. It's, it's your, your decision. Fault. You can't have a government mandate that. Yep. And, I mean, we talk about it all the time. Yeah. You know, let, let's just talk about anybody that's in a bad situation. And I come over and I say, brother, sister, I'm going to help you out. And they they slap my hand away. Yeah. All right. It's their decision and you can't force success on people. And, and, and if you, if you hear, if you hear an ideology or this or that, it's suggesting that you can run as far away as fast as you can, because they do not care about you. That is their bait to get you under their control. Yeah. And and I said this earlier, you know, people aren't students of history. They think history began when they were born. No, any type of power that is centralized in human, in, in, you know, in human circles uh, causes corruption eventually. Sometimes it's not the first time around. Sometimes it's not two decades in. Sometimes it's not three. But when that guy or that gal or that ruling family goes away, there's some new kids on the block. And how long are you willing to risk that? For society's sake to say, oh, they take care of business. They're benevolent. But for how long? Yeah. It's well, happened all throughout history. Yeah. yeah. I wish people would just wake up. That's why they don't want history taught in schools. This, yeah. this is why. Well, you look at the Israelites in the Bible and they're like, we want a king. He's yep. handsome and he's tall. His name's Saul. And what they don't realize is that, you know, the guy that follows him or he's corrupt. And I think you're, you're onto something. What's fascinating to me is that. I want to help people understand that within the hex contract, and I think the where I gain the most amount of respect for Richard Hart is this, I mean, it's true innovation in my opinion, because it's more than a CD and it's, it's the ability to mint value coupled with this, um, with this appreciating price, right? And this idea that, okay, I'm going to gain almost a multiplication factor when I tie these things together. Okay. So a typical meme coin, it's basically riding on the wind up and down. Yeah. You, you encourage people with an incentive to hold and you create stability. Now we're seeing price swings that are upwards of 85%, yeah. um, but it's different because this has kind of gone up and to the right for the last two years, the general trajectory. What I like about this, it's really the coupling of um, this idea of inflation rate with a disproportionate uh, reward based on those who invest or lock it up. And to me, 
that to me is the, the greatest genius piece. And I mentioned on my last video that I really think that what Richard Hart has done with this, this hex contract is going to be the core building block of essentially freeing a lot of people around the world based on affinity groups. And I think we're going to see his game theory used over and over and over and over again. And it's going to be almost inevitable freedom that the greedy among us, right? And what I love about it is you can come to the table in this contract and in this paradigm and you can make money, you can do well. Um, but at the end of the day, you're essentially eating your own lunch. The system itself, as you put money into it, I looked at Peter Thiel going, oh yeah, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. And I thought, you know what he doesn't realize is he literally put a nail in his own coffin because it's traditional you know, means is that regular people are going to win together. And that's going to, that's going to change the paradigm of, I think, haves and have nots. And to me, it, it potentially has an un unlocking effect in the world um, that we may see in the next 20 years. Yeah. And, you know, let, let's, let's think about it this way. Let's, let's think about this, you know, some people say it's revolutionary. Some people don't. We can all agree that it hasn't ever existed. Hex, okay? What has happened as a result of so many people winning? We have banded together and we have caused the people surrounding us and, and people throughout the world to do better things for better people. Yeah. There is no better illustration of what freedom does than what I'm seeing right now and what's happening. All right. How much am I charging people in, in my group right now on Telegram? Not a damn dime. You know why? Because I have a conscience and yeah. they don't need me to yeah. teach them. They, they, they have the Internet and all they have to do is a make the decision and then b sacrifice their greediness in the short term to get something in the long term and now see they're part of a community that cares. They're part of a community that, that loves and it's only going to get better. Now there's another part to this and I don't like it when people say this, they say it can't be stopped. It can be stopped. Okay. I'm the mayor of Realville over here. It can be stopped. It, so it's, there's going to come a point where we're going to be doing so well but it's going to be hurting somebody else. Yep. It's going to be hurting somebody else who's been established for a very long time. It's going to be taking money. It's going to be taking resources from them, probably an old school financial system or the IRS, whatever the case may be. And they will come for people like you and I, and they will watch these YouTube videos and they will call me up and say, so uh, what's your, uh, what's your wallet number? Yeah. You know, stuff. So we've got to be ready for that too. Yep. Um, because it's going to grow to a point where that's going to happen. It's already happening. And, and I'm sure pre attacks are being made by means of data harvesting as we speak on yep. all sorts of things like this. Yeah. Can't years, be naive. Yeah. No. And years ago, I mean, right at the birth of the internet, I knew a guy who knew a guy, if you know what I mean, yeah. and that they basically had been logging IP addresses in with unique identifiers very, very early on. Mm -hmm. And so if you think about that, as it relates to uh, wallet IDs, I mean, if you've done any sort of KYC process to get, you know, money or fiat into the system, mm -hmm. you just might as well understand that they've got your name connected to your wallet. They do. You know, and so, you know, that anonymity, I mean, there are, there are extremes to all of that. Um, yeah, I agree with you, though. Look what's happening in China. I think it's going to be a constant whack-a-mole <laughs> process. Um, and, you know, I've got a little bit of faith in humanity that there are going to be some bastions of hope around the, the world. But I, I wouldn't be surprised that there's a lot of um, there's a lot of movement of people in the crypto space to other jurisdictions, if you will. I think this is going to change the nature of boundaries a lot. Um, and, it already is. Yeah even without crypto. Well, yeah. think about, all right, let's think about this. Let's think about Elon Musk. Yeah. Where did he just move his headquarters to? Yeah. South Texas. Is Elon Musk a Bitcoin holder? Yes. Does Elon Musk love freedom? I've seen him, I've seen him make a transition yeah. because I think that he's seen the negative effects of, of what, uh, I mean, just call it what it is. It's, it's, 
it's Marxist and socialist ideology. Uh, and I've done videos and videos on this type of stuff. And I'm not saying Marxists and socialists in a bad way, even though I think it is bad. I'm just saying that these these are the the, the tenets of, of what's happening. And he sees that. So, yes, it's already redrawing uh, borders in terms of business. Uh, and, and we're just going to see it more and more and more. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, let's talk about Pulse Chain. Obviously, yeah. um, you know, hasn't launched yet. Uh, new fork of Ethereum. Uh, changing proof of work to proof of stake, which is is brilliant. Faster, cheaper, better, better throughput, um, shorter block times. Um, so, I'm really curious. What are your thoughts? You came into this through Hex. What's your What's your uh, opinion on Pulse? I'm excited, man. I'm excited because for the first time, uh, for the first time, I'm able to get in on day one. Yeah. Okay. Now I've done well. But, but I've always known in the back of my head that I, I, I could have done better if I yeah. gotten in on day one. Yeah. So that's pretty daggone cool. All right. Uh, the second thing is I'm happy on a, in a broader sense to become part of a budget, a, you know, burgeoning ecosystem right now. Yeah. So we, we might have stable coins. We might have exchanges. We got Pulse. We got Hex. And we're building it out. So I'm happy to be a part of all this because there's a massive amount of opportunity just because I'm sticking around. Yeah. And, and I'm also very happy about this because I have enough confidence to talk to the folks who follow me about it yeah. and, and I'm begging people. And I tell, I tell people this a lot, being in on day one is the safest place for your investment to be the safest place because if it goes up and it goes up a 50 X and then it drops down uh, uh, you know, a 40 X, you're still 10 X up. Yeah. And then as time goes on, it's either going to go sideways or it's going to keep going up. So it's the safest place to be. And I love that. Oh yeah. So day one, week one, month one, let's hop in there. Let's figure it out. And then let's, let's be smart, use proper risk management and, and take some of that capital that we've gained and roll these into some other projects that are being created and really be a part of, of a strong community from start to finish. So I'm, I'm very excited about it. I am. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, and I think we're already seeing projects start. Um, one of the interesting observations, you know, everybody wants to talk about price predictions on Pulse and, and those type of things. I literally, right before this interview, watched um, Crypto Panda look at uh, the Binance Smart Chain as the proxy for growth. And, you know, it, it's not impressive like Ethereum. I mean, it, it, well, it's so funny. We're so spoiled with, with the returns, but right. <laughs> um, I think 27.5% in a year or something like that. But he made an incredible observation that I want to give him credit for on this. And that is that, you know, the price of day one sacrifice, right, of a dollar to 10,000 points in pulse mm -hmm. is different than today. And it kind of dawned on me when he shared this, because I think it's absolutely brilliant of Richard Hart. Yeah. This idea of saying, okay, I'm going to put this bonding curve in place. I'm going to reduce it and we're only going to do it for 19 days. But you notice that, you know, that wallet didn't disappear. It still sits there for all of those coins to be sacrificed to. And of course he said, you know, please stop sacrificing. I'll honor it if you do. What Crypto Panda said that I think is amazing is it's really an off market price discovery. And I hadn't thought about it that way to say, oh, yeah. what is the price of Pulse today? Well, it's actually reflected on what you can get it for technically. And obviously we're not buying it, but this idea of what do you sacrifice it for? So let's say you get it for 500 coins. Mm -hmm. All right. Take a dollar and divide it by 500 and versus 10,000. And so he put together the Binance information. He said, well, 27, eight. well, that put a final price on 12 months at 24.3 cents. That is unbelievable. When it yeah. comes to you know, that, that is cool. I never thought about that, but that is kind of a litmus test of, of where we may launch um, based on, based on the excitement that we have. And that, that gives them a pretty good idea. I I've done some pretty, I've done three videos with the information available at the time for each video. 
And every video we've gotten a little bit more. Um, you know, I did some math on it, and the, the very interesting thing that I found, and my my tough part is finding the the market cap. That's what we have to figure out initially at launch. What's that market cap going to be? People are throwing around numbers. It's going to be eight to ten times the amount of money that sacrifice is the typical average type thing going on. If that's the case, and if we do have a supply, uh, you know, between the the market makers, the balancers, uh, the OA sacrifice from Hex, and everybody else, that puts us around two hundred sixty trillion. Okay, but if you understand what happened with Hex. Yep. Out of that, out of the 635 billion total supply of hex, what's actually available to people after two years? It's it's two to three percent of five percent of the total. Yeah. That's a very, very small amount. So when when I see people on on Reddit, when I see people on YouTube in my comments just trashing me, it's good. 10,000 X is gonna absorb the whole pr-. no, it's not like that at all. Yeah. I estimate and I'll go on camera here and and I've done some videos. When I did my math, my mind was blown. It was 0.00056 day one. The all time low for hex was 0.00056. Wow. I thought that was very interesting. And in the world of of Richard Hart, I'm like, eh, could that be coincidence? And, And I didn't manipulate it that way. I thought that was pretty cool. So I definitely think we have the ability, based on the amount of supply that will be available to users, we could be in the uh, 10 cent range to 50 cent range within 18 to 24 months. That's unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable. And, and that's based on that's based on a lot of math, a lot of thinking that I've done. I could be completely off. There could be something that he's going to just pop up out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, all of us have, you know, 50 to $100 million overnight. I don't know. That's okay. That's okay. Um, well, let's talk about that. I'm really curious. I know you've got a depth of financial knowledge that I think is helpful to tap into when I have you here. So on that OA sacrifice, that was what, 13 to 14 billion of hacks. Yeah. Um, so when it comes down to liquidity and these comments, and I've seen a lot of talk, I've, I mean, my first video was about this idea of hack, or, uh, Pulse not being for sale unless liquidity is provided by sacrificers. There seems to be some really interesting uh, game theory and kind of market moves, if you will, on the liquidity side. Do you think, and, and tell me what you think about this, uh, this massive last minute um, sacrifice. Do you think that the stability, I almost feel like that amount of sacrifice tax is going to be utilized to really help protect the community. I don't know how, but I do know that it seems that way to me. What are your thoughts on that? And can you enlighten me on what that yeah, means? Yeah, so let's talk about that. All right. Um, now, I'm, I'm not I'm not very well spoken in this, so I'm going to be thinking off the top of my head. I've, I've researched it. I've thought about it. Uh, so let's take uh, let's take Big Payday for example with Hex. If you're familiar with Big Payday, there's a you know a, a huge price pump leading up to it, and uh, and essentially, um, hold on a second, sorry. Essentially, what happened was the OA address came in and swooped up 95 percent of the supply. Now, why would they swoop up 95 percent of the supply? Well, just like everybody else says, it 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 protects those people who actually uh, purchased, bought it, uh, protects them from being able to be dumped, protects from market manipulation. When Hex finally does get to some big time exchanges, you're going to have bots, you're going to have bad actors in there, but they're not going to, they're not going to be able to affect the price, but so much because of that. It's kind of like a hedge of protection around, around these people. Um, the second, the, the second thing that you got to know about Hex is that huge supply is also used in a way to, to pay that inflation, right? So that's important to know too. And, and the supply is so high because, you know, Hex is going to be 10 years old one day. Yeah. How many users are going to be in there? How many are going to be minting? How many are we going to be burning? How much needs to be paid out? So that's a big part of that too. So when I see this massively high supply of Pulse in my head, Step one, I'm thinking, okay, this is going to be a hedge of protection. All right. 
So, so one person can kind of protect it, which is the OA, whether that's Richard or a conglomerate of investors, who knows who that is. And then the second is, I think he's planning for future ecosystem. He's going to need to be able to have payouts for different types of projects, depending on how they interact with the pulse chain. Hmm. So that's, that's essentially my thoughts on it. And if we take it down to more of a granular level, if you understand how, how markets work, essentially you have a buyer and you have a seller. Well, what if this guy is selling something for five cents, but this guy is only willing to pay one penny for it? Well, what do we do? What's in between? Well, we have market makers. Market maker buys it and they basically keep the market moving until they find a seller that comes along and they sell it out. So what we're doing now too is with the you know two to five percent, whatever the case may be, in terms of the initial uh, balancers and market makers. Um, I think that's going to provide enough liquidity to at least keep the market moving with the amount of users that we have. And as the Pulse network grows out, obviously those liquidity pools are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So um, uh, there is a method behind the madness. I see the angles. I, I kind of see what's going on. I don't have the whole picture. I don't know the full story, but I, it's starting to take shape. Well, I, I trust that Richard's got some yeah. tricks up his sleeve, if he will. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. fantastic. Well, okay. So you seem, you know, here we've gone through quite a few different topics. It's really awesome to spend time with you. Um, I love that you're an advocate. I, I kind of see you as a big brother with shades mm -hmm. and you're, you're helping protect folks and wanting to serve as a, I, I think uh, seems like a mentor, but in a way that's very accessible, right? Authentic humor, all of that type of stuff. Um, do you, do you feel like um, as things grow, what's the, what's the future look like for you when it comes to content and your channel and that type of thing? Yeah. So here I made this decision a while back. I, I was really struggling with how I was going to monetize what's going on here. And I struggled with it from an ethical standpoint because I'm here. I am preaching, you know, don't let people screw you over. But then I go and say, hey, here's a subscription to my channel for $100 a month. And that really irked me. All right. So the way that I overcome that internally, and some people may uh, agree or disagree with that, what I plan on doing is giving as much value as I can, possibly humanly possible, away for absolutely free. Just nothing, no cost. Okay. If people want to advertise with me, I'll pick the projects that I think will, will benefit my people. And, and hopefully it doesn't even have to be money projects. It's probably going to be, I hope I get hit up by, you know, who, uh, who's Oakley. the sunglass. Yeah. Oakley, dude, come on, man. That's an easy way for me to be able to sleep at night. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Everybody, hey, click the link below. If you want these Oakley's 15% off. So, so that's kind of my angle. And, and I also have a couple other tricks up my sleeve and I'll tell you about it now. I'm working on it. One of the biggest problems that, that we talk about in this community that nobody has solved is how to correctly value projects across the crypto sphere. So what if we were able to put together an equation that helped people understand that and create a ranking website that actually mattered? Hmm. So that's, that's one of the projects I'm working on too, be able to use that for advertising, et cetera. So as this grows, as this, as this goes forward, I just want to be there for people that can land on my YouTube channel and just trust what I'm saying and trust that I'm not trying to take every single dollar out of their pocket. I will ask for donations if you want to. You will get nothing return if you do, and it's $5 a month. That's as far as I'm going. Yeah. <laughs> as far as I'm going. I saw one of your memes the other day about the guy with his I think he was sitting on his Lamborghini fishing because he didn't have any friends. And I was thinking, you know, the reason I think we're doing all this stuff on YouTube and is that uh, we know that when we're rich, we won't have any friends in our neighborhood. Yeah. Man, I do. I do it for my own mental health, man. Yeah, it's, it's good I, uh, to get all this stuff out. It's true. It's the yeah. truth. Well, it's, it's a pleasure to spend time with you and, and just hear your perspective. I think it's cool that, um, I, I love it. I, I feel like I, I got a better feel for why you're doing what you're doing and it means, 
um, it's cool. It's just cool to hear why, you know, people are motivated to do what they're doing and the service that they're providing and the style that they're doing it in. So I appreciate your time. And I, I, uh, I think it's awesome that, uh, guys like you are in this community and willing to serve and to, to support. So thanks. Yeah, for man, coming. you too. And, and I, I watched the entirety of your last video and it sparked off a multitude of ideas for me. And I said, I said, man, I, I'm embarrassed to even go on video now with this guy out there on YouTube. No, you got some good ideas, man. Well, I'm excited. Well, we're working on some stuff that I'm, I'm hoping that, um, you know, I get to share with a group of people at some point in time, because my heart in everything is, you know, I just spent 20 years in the nonprofit space and seen, you know, I've been, I've been in the process of begging for money forever and yeah. it doesn't, it's not sustainable. And when I saw crypto and how it fits into really what the, I would consider to be the generosity sphere, uh, to me, I saw a tremendous unlocking happening. Um, and when you mentioned abundance, I mean, it just makes me smile because, um, this idea of unlocking generosity is literally the mission of my life. And so, um, it's just cool. It's cool that I can have these discussions with people because, um, you know, here in central Texas, I don't run into a whole lot of folks who could talk abstractly about the global finance, you know? Right. Right. So it's cool. Well, well dude, thanks yeah. For- thank, thanks for having me, man. Super appreciate it. And I can't wait to send people to your channel, man. You, you hey. got some really, really good ideas. And I know everybody listening to this is like, oh, he's just kissing his ass, but I'm telling y'all <laughs> check it out. Crypto heartbeat. No joke. Thanks, dude. All right. Yeah. See you, man.